Strawberry is up facing Dell Strawberry was perhaps one of the most electrifying players in Major League Baseball history. He entered the league with the New York Mets in 1983, and throughout his 17-year career, he made eight consecutive All-Star Game appearances and captured four World Series championships. But his baseball prowess on the field at times was largely overshadowed by his controversial life off of it. And it had a lot to do with how he grew up. My childhood always was a, a real disaster, you know, due to the fact that um, I had tremendous fear factor um, in my life, you know, from my father. Um, he was a very abusive, uh, raging alcoholic. Daryl grew up in South Central Los Angeles with his four siblings, Mike, Ronnie, Regina, and Michelle. Their father, Big Hank, was prone to fits of rage, mostly to Daryl and his older brother, Ronnie. Me and Ronnie basically was um, his whooping pole. You know, he would lay us across the bed. You know, we had to take our shirts off, and he would have, like, an extension cord, and he would beat the crap out of us and tell us, you, you're never going to be nothing, you don't do nothing right. And, uh, and it was just, it, it was so bad, you know, and then, I was terrified inside uh, of the fact that uh, what he was saying to me, I truly believed it. When Daryl was 13 years old, one night, he and his brothers decided to take a stand. That night when he came home and he was drunk, he was abusive to my mom, you know, we all woke up and, and my older brother Mike, you know, he finally confronted him and told him, just get out of here and leave us alone. And my dad was like, went into a rage, you know, he pulled out a shotgun to start making these threats about I'll kill all you guys. Ronnie went in there and grabbed a butcher knife, and you know I went in and grabbed a frying pan skillet. I know Ronnie was thinking along the lines I was thinking, only one's dying in here tonight is him. Big Hank eventually backed down. Police came to their home and told him to leave. Their mother was left with five kids to raise on her own. She loved her kids. Uh, didn't matter whatever struggle it was going to be, she was going to take care of us. While Daryl's life at home was finally peaceful, his father's abuse stuck with him, but he began to use baseball as an outlet to channel his anger. I thought I was, you know, bigger than life and nobody could tell me nothing. And that, was, that wasn't anything personal. It was always because of uh, the fact that I, I had been controlled for so long. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I, this was my outlet and this was where nobody was gonna ever control me again. Despite his bad attitude, his talent was undeniable. He was the number one draft pick in 1980 and was selected by the New York Mets. After three long years in the minors, he was brought up to the majors. He also married his first wife, Lisa. He had a stellar rookie season and earned the Player of the Year award in 1983. But with all the fame, also came the pressure to perform. If I did something good, he's great. If you do something wrong, he's, you know, he's not hustling. He doesn't look like he's, you know, playing hard. You know, when I hit Tremendous bombs and win games. Oh, he's the greatest. You know, it's no. So it was. It was a. It was a no-win situation. The pressure came in from all sides. Eventually, Daryl turned to drugs to deal with it. I did everything that make me feel good. You know, I. I mean, I. It, I, I drank alcohol. I took amphetamines later on down the line. You know, I got introduced heavily into cocaine, which was, you know, my outlet and my escape. You know, that was the biggest escape for me when I found that. I found out where I could escape away from everybody and everything. Even though Darrell's personal life was crashing, he helped lead the Mets to the 1986 World Series Championship. Then in 1990, he accepted a lucrative deal to play with the Los Angeles Dodgers. I regret that I left New York, you know, because I had had it with New York. You know, I had, not the fans, I had had it with the media. Darrell spent three seasons with the Dodgers, but because of his drug habit, his career was hitting rock bottom and he was eventually traded to the San Francisco Giants. But while he was in L.A., his wife invited him to a convention by Evangelist Morris Sorello. That, that week, that weekend, as I, all I did was cry when I heard him up there preaching. He said, the Sunday, I'm going to lay hands on everybody that comes in here. You know, we're going to, that was the re most remarkable move I had ever seen in my life. And, you know, there was a line formed and the power of God hit me. And when I got up, I, and when I got up, my belly was like a river. It was just, I mean, I had never experienced anything like that in my life. Daryl had given his life to the Lord, 
but the battle wasn't over. He couldn't kick his drug habit, which cost him his marriage. The league forced him to go to rehab, and as if things couldn't get any worse, his mother had died. Um, I was out of baseball, okay. um, and um, that was not what anyone at that time. And mom, mom passed away, and I, I just wasn't going to play any more baseball because I had been suspended from baseball for drugs. Um, I had went through that battle, and I just kind of like had had, had enough. After rehab, Daryl entered the lesser-known independent league. It wasn't long before he received an unexpected call. It was the New York Yankees. Uh, Mr. Steinbrenner brought, brought me back uh, to New York. Uh, what a gift, you know, and I was, uh, you know, he's the person that I'm always grateful for. Uh, when everybody was, r had written me off, um, he didn't care what their opinions were. You know, he says, I want this guy, he's a New Yorker. He belongs in New York, he's gonna play for, he's gonna play for the Yankees. Darrell's career was back on track. He married his second wife, Sharice, and also helped his team win the 96 and 98 World Series championships. Again, his life appeared to be shaping up on the field, but at home, his drug habit had resurfaced, and it began to affect his marriage. It was more of a different relationship uh, with Sharice than it was with Lisa, um, because things had changed a little bit different in my life. Uh, but I, but I also still had some, you know, still had those that anger and those abusive ways and, you know, verbal abusive ways, you know, in, in my life that were just ferocious, you know, and could drive a person crazy. Not only were things coming undone at home, but by the end of the '98 season, Daryl was diagnosed with colon cancer. The doctor said, I, "Is this amazing? You know, it's amazing, and I say amazing uh, that this tumor did not burst open." And, and spread throughout your body. After surgery and six months of chemotherapy, Darrell was miraculously back on the field the next season, and he helped the Yankees win their third championship in four years. But after the 99 season, Darrell was arrested for soliciting a prostitute and drug possession. He was suspended from the league, and over the next five years, Darrell lost everything. He lost his career, his wife, and he almost lost himself, but he managed to get to a drug recovery convention where he met Tracy. Tracy could relate to Daryl because she had had her own struggle with drug addiction. Um, I saw a man that was very broken, even physically. A person who has addiction themselves, you just know. You, I could look in him and just see. He wasn't even clean yet. Um, he was still physically addicted and just sitting in the seat full of heaviness. I was hurting so much and I was angry and, and mad and you know just pissed, but. Um, uh, she came into my life, and, and um, I, I, I looked at her, and I, I saw something different in her. You know, I saw something different in her eyes. Tracy and Daryl became good friends, and even though Daryl was still struggling, a born-again Christian Tracy proved to be a guardian for Daryl. I would plead with God, not only for my own life, but standing in the gap for Daryl, not even knowing what that statement meant. Mm -hmm. Just being on my face and praying and crying out to God, not these fancy prayers, because I didn't have enough word in me to pray it. Crying out to him, God, show yourself to me. Just save us, transform us, take this desire out. Get this out of me, get this out of him. Wherever he is, cover him. Mm -hmm. And just words that I would hear. God understands you where you are. He meets you right where you're at. Tracy's example soon began to rub off on Daryl, and he knew it was finally time to make a change. I just had to surrender. I had to get, I had to get with God myself. You know, I had to separate myself from, you know, everything, everything and everybody, because God was calling me, and I, it's either I was going to answer this call or I was going to die. Daryl went back to church and rededicated his life to the Lord, and this time it was for good. Tracy and Daryl married in 2006, and today they're both doing better than ever. Daryl is currently working closely with the Mets organization, and together with Tracy, they founded the Daryl Strawberry Foundation, which is dedicated to children and adults with autism. For years, Daryl's life was surrounded by controversy, but these days, he says, he's a changed man. I want them to see the remarkable man you know, that I always knew I, I had the capabilities of being, and not playing baseball, but the remarkable man that God has made me. And, and you know what, they see that today. They go, this, he, you know, I am so proud of what the Lord has done, you know, for me and through me, because you become a splitting image of God image 
when the world can see that you're different.